Okay, the next thing I want you to do this week is play with some layouts in terms of CSS. Now we can certainly build all of our own CSS layouts, but it's also just as easy and convenient to go ahead and take a template that is already pre-constructed and modify it. There are thousands of templates that you can find online and in your Moodle I have linked to the CSS template website that I use frequently but you can use one of those or you could go out and get anything you want or you could do what I'm about to sample or demonstrate here which is just grab a template right here from within Dreamweaver which is fine as well so what you need to do is grab some sort of template save it as uh, layout one original and link to it from your instructional design page and then save a copy of that page save it as layout one modified and change it and then again link to it from your instructional design page so here we go I'm in with I'm in Dreamweaver and again you can get this template from anywhere I'm just going to choose uh, Dreamweaver's tools I'm going to do file new and instead of doing blank page HTML and then create I'm going to go ahead and come over here and click on uh, one of these different types of um, templates over here. Now some of them are fixed, some of them are uh, fluid. Fluid means that the t page will resize depending on the end user's screen. Um, fixed means that it's going to be a static width and therefore it's not going to resize. Your, your user may have to scroll left, right, up or down in order to view the content. I'm going to go ahead and choose um, this two column fixed right sidebar header and footer. Oops, nope, never mind, I'm going to choose the left sidebar. Um, whichever one you want to choose, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and click on create. And then I'm going to, because it's good practice, give it a title, layout um, original. And I'm going to save it. And that's really all you have to do with this. I'm going to save as. Now I've already laid out, because I had to hyperlink beforehand, I've already laid out all of my file names, so I'm going to end up overwriting a file here. You should be saving a file for the first time, so I'm going to get this overwrite prompt, but you shouldn't get that, right? Here, at this particular point, now I want to go ahead and immediately save this as a Layout 1 modified file so that I can play around with it, but still have the original to compare to. Once again, I'm giving an, getting an overwrite piece um, that you guys wouldn't necessarily have. Now, in my Dreamweaver, I've got my original here, and I've got my modified here. So I can go ahead and play around with these. What I want you to do in these uh, templates is just play around and see what you can figure out in terms of, okay, here I'm in, the, in a div called um, dot .content. That's a class. So I'm going to come over here, and I can find my dot .content class and I can click on my pencil to edit that. I can see that it's a box of um, 700 pixel, 780 pixels wide. Um, it's got some padding going, right? Uh, one of the things that I can immediately play with is its background. I can choose to put in a background on it and apply it. And I can even kind of see it happening there. I'm not so concerned about what this looks like in terms of, of good colors or uh, you know, cohesive design and things like that. I just want you to get used to playing with the layout. So um, that's all I really want to do there. And let me see, there's one or two other things. For example, if I click in here, I can see that this is my div sidebar one or my unordered list navigation. Now, depending on where the um, definition for the font is is what I would have to look for so example here this is my div sidebar one I can actually see that it encompasses this entire sidebar so if I wanted to change the font for the entire sidebar I would go over here and find that dot sidebar one which is right there and change the font there however if I wanted to change the font only say for this navigation piece here I'd click in here and see that it is, again, as we saw earlier, part of the sidebar one, but it's also now got its own class called ul.nav, ul standing for unordered list dot navigation. So I'm going to come over here and click on my ul.nav, and I'm going to click on my pencil, and I'm going to come over here to type. And for the sake of making a change, I'm going to go ahead and change... Um, 
going to change that to a different font size uh, type and I'm going to change it to a different font size and maybe I'll go ahead and change it to a different color as well. So if I click on apply and click OK, now you will see that this is a different font size and uh, color and um, type. So once again, going through this, I want you to go ahead and change um, anything you want on here. One other quick sample, for example, here if I highlight this, I can see that it's an H1, correct? I can tell that that's listed as H1. This is listed as H2, right? But if I come over here and take a look here, I don't see, I see a whole slew of H1 through 6 in a paragraph piece, but that's really not going to give me a lot of flexibility. This is a grouped, um, a grouped definition in terms of style, and it's probably just looking at the font for all of these throughout. But if I wanted to differentiate, say, the H1 through the H2 from the H3, I actually have to create separate rules for them instead of having this grouped rule here. So what I would want to do is I'd want to create a rule for that H1, but again, there is no separate H1 rule over here. So I could do one of two things. I could create a new rule here, or because I'm dealing with actual heading tags, I could do um, things faster by clicking on page properties and go to my headings here and choose, um, again, font sizes and colors. I'm going to go ahead and do um, the H2 at the very same time, and that's mainly because I know I've got both an H1 and an H2 in this document. And so there indeed I have changed my content. So go ahead, make some changes, minor, major, you can add background images, whatever you would like. Just make it something visually different and then save it and then go ahead and link to it from your instructional design menu. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.